Hello, and welcome back to the Bot Spot. Today, we're going to continue our series on a danger of modernizing the church with focusing on emotions. What about a focus on emotions? The mentality behind it is, we want church to be a feel-good experience. There is too much negativity in the world, so we provide a place to come together and feel good. Events, plays, and skits fire us up and help us feel the spirit. Choirs uplift, and humming along is recommended. What are the negative sides to it? Yes, church is a positive experience, but it must be done God's way, in spirit and in truth. Fellowship is important, but not everything is faith, grace, and love. It's like if you ate chicken nuggets and had chocolate shakes to drink. It may taste good, but there's little to no nutritional value. We become fat and lazy. There is a sugar rush at first, but then comes the crash. Service may make you fired up or uplifted but it may be lacking or empty in scripture, and that leads to weaker Christians. Those who feel so strongly may not be willing to listen when it comes to correction. Emotion often overpowers reason. Choirs may sing harder or more complex songs, but all must sing. Also, songs must be scriptural. Singing is a command, Ephesians 5.19, says to sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord, not to men. Passion plays dramatize everything for the sake of emotions, but what funds them? The contribution? These also are unscriptural. Now, this doesn't happen at scriptural congregations, but comfort is a serious issue. We do much for the Lord, so we can rest on our laurels, right? Paul, in talking about his qualification as an apostle, did he rest on his laurels? No, he used his past as an opportunity to reach others. Are we too busy to study the Bible? Hebrews chapter 4 verses 11 through 12 state, the Bible will expose us for who we really are. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and, a and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What about those who make excuses to miss gospel meetings? Psalm 122 in verse 1 reads, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Sure, that's true on regular services, but for every occasion? David, mostly, followed God's word and was called a man after God's own heart. Can we be, if we don't follow his desire to worship? Ignorance may lead to missed chances to teach others the Bible. James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Sure, these words are comforting, but these were mentioned in reference to trials. Do we study and pray when facing them? We must ask for these things in faith, but faith without works is dead. 2 Timothy 3, 13-17 read, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have heard, learned, and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God 
and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Trials are coming. No, they're here. So how can we be perfect and complete? During difficulties, scriptural wisdom helps us to find those that Paul warns of in verse 13, deceiving and being deceived. There is no room for that in the Lord's church. So disastrous. It happens when we don't study. From a child, you have known the scriptures. Those of us who were in the church our whole lives, is that true for us? Are we wise into salvation? We should be. It's our hope. Thank you very much for your attention.